Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. I wanted to show you some center of mass example problems, so today I'm going to be showing you this one here. We're going to sketch the region bounded by the curves, and then find the exact coordinates of the centroid. The curves that we have in this case are y equals 1 over x, y equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 2. I do want to quickly just mention one quick thing about the difference between centroid versus center of mass. In this context, and many contexts that you're going to come across, they're going to be the exact same point. Center of mass is just used to describe a physical object with an actual mass, like a thin plate, for example. A centroid is used to describe a two-dimensional region drawn on an XY plane. So since this region doesn't actually have mass, because it's just a two-dimensional object, center of mass isn't really appropriate. However, centroid and center of mass are going to use the same formula. So I'll get into what that formula is in a minute. Um, first, we'll go ahead and just jump into this problem by going ahead and sketching the region bounded by these curves. So let's go ahead and start with our xy axis. And 1 over x is going to look something like this. We're going to have a horizontal and a vertical asymptote here and here. And then we would have a similar kind of thing going on down here as well. But since all the rest of these are in the positive, you know, the first uh, quadrant, positive x and y, uh, we don't really need to worry about this piece down here y equals 0 is just going to be the x-axis here. x equals 1 is going to be a vertical line at x equals 1, which would be right about here. And then x equals 2 is going to be a vertical line at x equals 2. So you can see the region that is kind of trapped between all these different functions that we were given is right there. So our centroid is going to be somewhere within this little area. And to figure out exactly where that is, we're going to need to use the center of mass equation integrals, which are two of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. If you haven't already checked that out, there's a link down in the description below where you can go grab yourself a copy of that. It's available for instant download. It's very affordable, so you can go grab that and start using it today to make homework and studying for tests a lot easier for you. So actually, go ahead, push pause on this video real quick, go click that link, grab yourself a copy, download it, have it ready, and then I'll show you how to use these two equations on there. So the equations on my study guide that I mentioned are the center of mass equation integrals, which we'll go ahead and start with those formulas, and then I'll show you how to use them. So here's the formulas from my study guide. We really could start with either one. We pretty much have to do them each separately, so we kind of have like two different sub-problems here within this problem. I'll just go ahead and start with the x, the x bar, which basically just represents the x-coordinate of the centroid of this region. And then y bar is obviously going to be the y coordinate of the centroid. So both of these are going to basically rely on the fact that we have this y equals 0 as our, you know, one of our bounds of this region. Because this f of x that's in both of these equations is just going to be the other function that we have that creates that region. So in this case, that other function is y equals 1 over x. So this 1 over x is going to be uh, the f of x in both of these equations. The other thing I want to point out is this capital A here. This just represents the area of the region. So the first thing we would need to do is figure out the area of this region here, and then we would be able to use that for capital A in both of these equations. I'm not going to show you all the process of doing that. I have made another video on how you can find the area between two curves, and we could basically just do y equals 1 over x as one of our curves, and y equals 0 as our other curve between 1 and 2. And if you want to check that video out, you can just click up there at the top of your screen. But essentially what that would come down to is just the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x. And if you figure out what that integral is, that actually tells you that the area of this region is going to be natural log of 2. So we're going to be able to use natural log of 2 for the area of this region. And that's going to be true for both of these equations. We'll start with this one though, and then we'll kind of get into the y bar in a second. And then we're going to have the integral from a to b, where the bounds of this integral are just going to be the left and right edge, basically whatever x values our region actually sits in. So in this case, the bounds of our integral are just going to be 1 and 2, because this entire region is between x equals 1 and x equals 2. And then we're going to have x times our function f of x. Well, again, our function f of x in these equations is going to be 1 over x. So we're just going to get x times 1 over x, dx. 
So now we can go ahead and simplify this a bit. The natural log of two is not gonna simplify, but this integral will because we have x times one over x. Well, the x's are just gonna cancel and we're just gonna get the integral of one with respect to x. The integral of one is just x, which then we just need to evaluate from one to two. And then we're gonna still have that times one over natural log of two Plugging in two is gonna give us two. Plugging in one is gonna give us one. So evaluating this from one to two, we're just gonna get two minus one, which is just one. So we're just gonna get this one over natural log of two carrying through. One over natural log of two times one is just gonna be one over natural log of two, which is what the X coordinate of our centroid is gonna be. So now that we've figured out the x coordinate, we can go over here to the y coordinate and we're gonna apply basically the same process. So again, we're gonna get y bar equals one over the area of our region, which is just one over natural log of two. The integral from one to two, again, the bounds of this integral are gonna be exactly the same as the bounds of the other integral. And then we're gonna get one half times our function f of x, which is one over x, all squared, now, again, we can kind of simplify this a bit. We're gonna get y bar equals, we have a constant one half here that we can actually pull out of our integral. So that'll be one over two times natural log of two times the integral from one to two of one over x all squared. Well, this is just gonna simplify down to one over x squared. And what you wanna keep in mind is one over x squared is actually the same as x to the negative two. So, you know, when you have this kind of, this integral here, the easiest way that we're gonna be able to evaluate that is by converting it into x to the negative two. And the reason is, once we do that, we can actually use the power rule to evaluate it. So the power rule says we're gonna be able to raise our power by one. So negative two plus one is gonna be negative one. And then we divide by our new power. Our new power is negative one. So x to the negative one divided by negative one is basically just gonna make it negative. And then we're gonna evaluate that from one to two. And then we'll still keep all this stuff out here. Now to evaluate this from one to two, we're just gonna plug in two. And remember, x to the negative one is the same as one over x. So plugging in two into this is actually gonna give us one over two. But then we do have this negative here. So negative one over two. And then we're gonna do minus the result of plugging in one here. One over x, one over one, is just gonna be one, and then we still have a negative, so negative one. And then again, we'll just keep this two ln two out here. So then we have these negatives that are gonna cancel and turn into a positive, so we're gonna get negative one half plus one right here, which is just a positive one half, times one over two ln two, which is just gonna be one over four ln two. So we know the x coordinate of our centroid is gonna be one over natural log of two, and the y coordinate of our centroid is gonna be one over four times ln of two. So the exact coordinates of our centroid is gonna be one over ln two and one over four ln two. And it would be a good idea, we could definitely you know, plug these into a calculator and figure out about what these are just to confirm that that point actually lies here, you know, somewhere in the middle of that region. And if we did that, we would find that this is about 1.4 and 0 0.4, which you know, x equals 1.4, y equals 0 0.4 is definitely within this region here. So that definitely seems like a reasonable answer, should make sense, um, so that that's basically it. We know the coordinates of our centroid to be this point right here. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified of all my new videos. I'm sure together we'll be able to get you some much better grades in calculus and save you a lot of time along the way. Thanks and see you next time.